first time we uh, looked at using this process was uh, in 2016. And since it was a new process to us, half the job was doing open hole, slurry redrill, and the other half was using segmental casing. Even on our own crews, it was perceived as like, this is slower, it's more expensive, because we were completing like four shafts a day, and they were able to drill six shafts a day. Well, those six shafts that they were drilling in the open hole method had to be slurried and drilled back through again. So although they were completing six open holes in a day, they had to redrill in the next day. So they were really only completing three. So the perception was, hey, we're getting more done, but really they were only getting half the process done. And then they were spending the money to put slurry in and then redrill back through it. I actually spent three weeks in Germany with one of the international leaders in segmental casing. I visited their production facilities, I went through a certification program, and then I went and spent time on projects. So we took all that we learned and we came back and we had a little training for all of our crews and then we said, hey, we're gonna keep doing this. We had to figure this out. The process was tough. There was a big learning curve, it felt slower. We had never had a whole collapse before, so we just felt like, hey, maybe we're spending all this money and time for nothing. Well, around that same time, there was somebody in our market who did have a whole collapse, and there was a significant injury, somebody died. It really made me think, like, this is important. I don't want to make that phone call. The capital investment was large on our part, but we thought, hey, you can't put a value on a life. And when it's all said and done, it's really not more expensive. The process is, uh, once the rig's assembled, you actually go over to the casing and it has these holes in the top which allow us to grab it with the rig. So the rig goes over the casing, it couples it in four places through these holes and then it lifts the casing. You put the casing into place at the correct location and then you start to advance that casing. Usually you can advance it uh, between five and 10 feet depending on soil conditions and depending on diameter. Once you've advanced it that far, you begin to clean out the casing. This whole time this is happening, the drill rig has a monitoring system. So you know, hey, here's my tip of my casing and here's my auger depth. And it's important because you don't want to get your auger below your casing and start causing voids to happen. So as you get close to the bottom of the casing, you advance the casing again. And uh, once the casing gets close to ground level, we put another piece of casing on. We bolt it together with uh, special bolts that keep everything flush and we repeat that process drilling out the casing, advancing casing, all the way until we get to depth. Uh, once we get to depth, we go through the inspection process, show the bottom of shafts at depth, soil's competent, and then once the uh, reinforcement that's needed is in the hole, you would begin the concrete process, which is basically putting concrete down the center of the reinforcement, and then slowly extracting the casing. One of the important parts of that is making sure that the concrete itself is always above the casing. Usually we're taking uh, tape measurements as we go, making sure we know, hey, our concrete is gonna fall because uh, it, it displaces the casing thickness, so it falls a little bit. So we, we do some calculations there as we pull out and make sure that we're 10 feet above whatever that casing joint is. And that way, as we pull up, we always leave the concrete uh, in the hole. And we do that basically until we get out. We're pulling up casing, unbolting, pulling off a section, and repeating that process until we get back to grade. We're seeing we can outproduce the traditional method and we're doing that without having concrete yields that are over about 10 percent high we're doing that without having to put slurry down the hole and redrill through it and we're you know i hate to keep driving it home but like we're doing it without putting people's lives in danger you know we're significantly reducing one of the risks associated with, with drilling a hole